uh, horseshoe here, um, uh, self-introduction, starting out. Tom Eklund, Commissioner. Jay Klinkforth, staff. Matt Heideman, staff. Mary Wolasek, staff. Don DeSorcy, staff. Shane Blazer, commission member. Lee Tal, commission member. Craig Brorn, commission member. Okay, thank you. And I'd like to Tom welcome Romeo. all. Tom Rome here, too. Oh, oh, Tom, and I think Chris is on board and Carolyn. Yep, Chris Bartek is online. Okay, thank you. We'd like to welcome all public viewers uh, as well. So let's start with the uh, first item, our second item here. I'll approve the September 9th, 2020 Park and Recreation Commission meeting minute. Has everybody reviewed those? I'll move for a, approval, but there's uh, a correction because uh, Jake was also here at the last meeting. Okay, that be noted. I just updated it. Thank you. Second. And a second, and I can't. Who was it? Tom, uh, mo uh, motion by I Tom, second by Craig. By Craig. To approve, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, I I'm have. in favor. I have it. <clears throat> Item number three. Uh, review and consider approval of the request for proposals for a new outdoor recreation plan. Now, I wasn't here at the last meeting, but I believe uh, Kyle uh, Kearns had gone over this with uh, commission members and staff. And I think, is he online with us? Okay. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes, go ahead, Kyle. All right, thank you. So uh, this was in response to the discussion at the last meeting. And uh, <clears throat> before I drafted this, I did reach back out to the Regional Plan Commission to inform them that this was the route we were going to pursue at first, at least. And they indicated that, uh, as another thought, if we wanted to just pursue the public component or the you know the the, the input component of the project via a consultant, they could still do the back end uh, of the draft or of the construction of the document. Um, but we could you know kind of take a hybrid approach where we would pursue um, the uh, again we hiring a consultant to do the, the public uh, component. But obviously the, the RFP is not written as such. The RFP is written uh, in its entirety for the entire project. But I did want to bring that up because the uh, Regional Plan Commission did uh, provide that as an option. So something to think about moving forward. But basically uh, what you have before you is, is what was drafted. Um, you know, I, I didn't certainly draft it uh, originally here. I, I, I looked at a few examples uh, regionally, uh, one of which was from Marathon County. That was probably the closest. Um, and uh, what I liked about Marathon Counties is it was very detailed and descriptive in regards to what we were looking for in the plan. And so uh, I followed that same approach, and you, you'll find a very detailed um, descriptive uh, scope of services and I think that's that's important to note because I think we'll hopefully get out of the plan exactly what we want but I think in in your review that should be the, the primary review to make sure that those uh, those several items under scope of services is everything uh, we're hoping for in a plan uh, and more and then uh, I do also lastly just want to note that the the updated copy you've been provided today uh, is, is really just uh, another copy from, uh, from another staff that took a, took a review and had some grammatical errors uh, that they noted, as well as the, uh, uh, the primary change under the uh, consultant selection. We removed the percentages, um, just uh, thinking that it might be more it might be in our better interest to remove the percentages when we weigh a consultant uh, in the event that there's something else that we want to you know, take into consideration or uh, you know a majority of us really like one consultant we don't have to necessarily stick to that weight that's been given to the consultant selection so 
other than that, I don't really have any other comments, but I'd be happy to answer any questions regarding the uh, draft. Okay, thank you, Kyle. Uh, commissioners, questions? Or... Kelly, I have a question. Okay. This is Chris. Did we yes, have Chris. two or three uh, vendors that we are considering sending this RFP to, or do we need to do that research yet? Uh, Kyle, are, are you there? I see there, there the plan is not to exceed twenty thousand dollars. So I wasn't here last week, but um, to answer Chris, Chris's question, could you? Yeah. So there, there's uh, there's a few ways of doing it, and most most times when you've got an RFP, you know, you can get a list of consultants. Uh, in this case, I think we'd get that list from the American Planning Association. Um, and that list would include a lot of, you know, the, the different planning firms that, that do these. Once we have that list, we would then do a, you know, a, a mail merge essentially or, or do a draft email that would send it to all of those. And then we'd also typically ask uh, the APA to put it on their website. Um, and then obviously if there's any others, um, you know, park associations, things of, things of that nature, we could send it to those individuals as well. Okay. Does that answer your question, Chris? Yeah, thank you. Any other? I, this is Kyle again, and I, you know, I would expect when when I contacted Marathon County, I asked them in 2018 how many responses they received, and I believe it it was four that they only received four. I'm hopeful that given what's going on, I I, I would think that there'd be a, a lot of firms looking for work, and I would think we'd probably receive anywhere from you know five to ten responses. And uh, the other thing to note is. I have not put a, a deadline yet, uh, so I think in, in any action that's taken here, uh, certainly identifying that deadline would be appropriate uh, and possibly a, a allowing staff to make minor changes to the RFP uh, in the event that there's other, you know, uh, edits that are needed or, or grammatical errors that are found uh, before the posting. So would we want to entertain a motion for staff to move this forward then to get the RFP out to the um, association? If, yeah, if everybody's on board and has reviewed this, that's, I guess that's what's in order. So. Kelly, this is Tom. Yes, Tom. Well. Yeah. What are... Kyle, I guess the question would be, when would we set the date uh, for when they'd be due? I think the the quickest you could probably do is three weeks, uh, and I probably wouldn't extend it beyond six. So I would say between three and six weeks would be appropriate. To, to get them on board, right? Right, for them for them to respond to okay. the RFP. Right. Okay. When, when could they... If we approve to move forward, when would, could we get it out? I think uh, at the earliest I could get it out by the end of the week, but I'm I'm probably thinking by next week. So if, if if it's out by next week, and we had a deadline, you know, three weeks would put us the second week of November. Six weeks would put us, you know, to the end of November. Well, I'd like to see us move forward with it, and. Uh, you know, the three to six weeks in there, I guess to me that doesn't matter where we'd go, four, five, six, whatever. Maybe the longer it might be, make it more uh, interest, too. Okay. Is that a motion? From me, Kelly? Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, this time, yeah, I'll move that we move forward with this and, uh, you know, set a deadline of five weeks. Okay. Motion was made by Alderman Rayom to uh, proceed with the RFP. I'll second that. And a second by Lee. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank, uh, thank you, uh, Kyle. You're welcome. Okay, uh, item number four, consider revisions to the Aquatic Recreation Center user fee schedule as presented by city staff. That information is all in our packet. So I just put explanations for how we kind of came up with each of the items that we had changed. And if you have any questions on them, let me know. Um, I did send these out last week, so I'm assuming everybody probably took a look at them. Um, let's see. We did change the hours slightly. We made two days longer. Um, the rate to get in is a little bit higher. It's seven dollars. Um, we added the um, children free with the adult pass, age two or under. And then we changed some of the wording in the um, guardian passes. Um, <clears throat> season passes increased a little bit for non-resident family. And rentable areas, um, we made them basically for the day instead of partial day rentals. Well, I have a question regarding what's driving the change since we had a partial year and not sure of, uh, you know, who the uh, people were that were coming and it was uh, some days of uh, capacity limited. So I guess I'm, my question's more about the uh, aquatic center, uh, you know, people getting in versus the use of the rooms, but um, this seems a little premature to me. It was requested that we look at this relatively soon after the season and have something to present to council, so that's why we wanted to get it to you to take a look at first. Well, we haven't seen any data about who was resident, who was non-resident. I had provided that at the last meeting. Those were dollars, not numbers, as I recall. There were attendance numbers as well. I can get that to you. I can email it to you. And originally, this was based on, uh, you know, other locations that have similar facilities, so... I'm still not sure of why we would change it at this point. Obviously this year, <clears throat> this summer was in a, a real good uh, time to come up with the real uh, success ratios and things I take it right Matt or? correct and as Don mentioned we did have requests to review the information and without going too crazy again based on the information we had we didn't want to really move the mark too far one way or the other but I think everybody felt minor adjustments were necessary based on the information that we received for end of season Is there, <clears throat> excuse me, any municipalities that agreed to the payments to make their residents? None that I'm aware of. Okay, so when you're reading this, that basically as it stands now, barring any of these agreements, resident would be City of Wisconsin Rapids, non-residents anywhere else? Okay, and then the other question that I had was, um, I'm not clear on the removing of the veterans uh, discount and instead I would uh, um, 
propose enhancing the veterans discount and extending it to anybody that's a veteran and if you're a veteran with a family to have a veteran family rate discount and therefore you remove any of the angst with the saying well yeah I'm a veteran with a family so forth and so on because the intent was if you've served our country you, re you deserve a, re a reduced rate to use uh, um, city amenity in my mind and um, I would argue that you could develop some kind of criteria that would reduce the rate to some percentage or by a certain dollar amount uh, regardless of what kind of pass you're purchasing and therefore you wouldn't have to do the you know one time a month recognition or whatever the case may be and, and that's fine if you guys want to consider doing that these are basically just recommendations at this point so When so when you're indicating that the council is going to act on this or the council is when's this coming to the council? How how soon, John? Or if the council had indicated even midsummer that they wanted to look at this as soon as possible after the season. So I would guess, and actually we would like to do some sort of early bird rate for Christmas, possibly. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to send out information with the tax bills if possible with, with everything updated at that time okay so to review what changes we're talking about day pass rates are going from six dollars to seven dollars is that accurate that's correct mm -hmm. okay the and five then entry pass stays the same which kind of pass? That five entry pass for residents. Is 20 bucks. Is $20, yep. yep. And then the proposal is to drop the veteran discount because of the reasons cited. And then increase the non-resident family pass by $40? Correct. So that's 240 so it is currently 200 Yes. And everything else for the most part stays the same? The only difference is we actually added. Um, oh, and the early bird. The, yeah, the early bird and then the guardian passes are now going to be available to anyone age 62 or over just to eliminate those people from swimming because that was happening. It's more likely if grandparents bring their kids, they're probably just there to watch the kids. So. Oh, so you're saying people would show up saying, I'm just going to watch them swim and then swim themselves? Yes. Okay. Correct. Yep, and to an under spree with a paid adult pass. Didn't we have a discussion at the last meeting, too, about uh, the Rapids Room and nonprofits? And yes. So I, I don't, don't recognize if we changed anything here or not. Um, the rental costs are the same. The only thing we took off for um, the cabanas and then the open shelter areas, we took off the deposit. And if that becomes an issue, we can change that again. Um, the only one that has a deposit, which is in, it's consistent with our other shelters, is the Rapids Room because they'll be picking up a key to use that. Well, what about the local nonprofits that we talked about? I wasn't sure if you wanted to discuss that next month after this is approved, or I didn't put it on this agenda. Well, as I recall, we. I didn't want to take action last month because you were going to do all these other rates and we would do them all at the same time. We can put it on a future agenda. Does the council set then? So we're still waiting on the council's conversation around the Park and Rec Commission and uh, what that relationship looks like? That's taking place or that's coming up or? There was a legislative committee where that started to be discussed. Okay. I think that was last week. Um, Mr. Aom probably has some information on it too, but. <clears throat> Trying to go through my mind quick. One of my notes right in front of me. There was no action taken. They started a discussion. Okay. And I think it's also important, um, and Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, part of the discussion was you know, we have an ordinance that kind of outlines park and rec, but there's some obsolete language in there. 
And I think the greater picture is what Park and Rec really wants to be involved in and then have that discussion also. You know, how far do you want it to go? What, what oversight, what responsibilities do you want? Because throughout the years we've had different Park and Rec commissions dependent on the commission, how involved they wanted to be. We've had some that we could barely even fill a commission. We've got a nice active commission now so it's trying to determine that level of involvement that you want. But that discussion is going on. I believe the way the ordinance reads today, this commission sets the rate. And I agree with you and I would argue that. And Tom, are you gonna say something about your notes or something up there or or no you were finished so uh, what the mayor said uh, that uh that's what it is uh, i guess what the commission what the commission really would what they would want to do and he also said that some some there's been some years that we couldn't get hardly enough people to fill the committee or if we had them that uh, had a, a hard time getting even a quorum in that so I guess looking for direction from the commission of what uh, they would want and would, within that, that uh, make sure to be defined of so everybody understood what it was. What duty, what duties that they actually have and what the, and with the council. So a little bit further, Tom, going off what you said, part of the problem is that the day pass rate, that would be for any resident or non-resident that shows up on day of. So the counts aren't really going to be 100% active, accurate, because they don't separate resident and non-resident on the day of the daily pass. So the only way you can really extrapolate is by how many residents bought a season pass or a punch card versus non-residents who bought that non-resident pass. But everybody that shows up day of has one rate, whether you're resident or non-resident. So just a question, because I'm not sure uh, I followed you, but for the data we have, if you applied these new rates to that, could you tell what the projected uh, income would have been oh I see what you mean yeah it, so technically because uh, yeah everybody on the day rate pass would be a day rate pass so the people that paid six dollars we could figure out that number times seven dollars so we would have that number correct does that answer your question yeah I okay uh, yes uh, Identify yourself, please. Yep. Come up to the podium, Dean, so, you, so they can hear you on TV. <clears throat> Welcome. So, thanks. You should know that. Um, <laughs> just wondering why is, is the reason that the day pass is the same for residents and non-residents is to not put upon the staff to try to identify where everybody's coming from on that day? It'll speak to I just to wanted lines. to make sure that's what it was. Okay, yep. thanks. I just wanted to know. Thanks. Thank you. So when it says day passes, what we have listed here is resident $4 with purchase of resident day punch card, non-resident $7 for, for day you, passes. You can only purchase the punch pass if you're a resident, and then you'd purchase that for $20, and that's five entries. Okay. But if you don't purchase the punch pass, then the yep, resident then will also pay the $7. Correct. Same as the non-resident. Oh, so the resident has to put saying. forth okay. a little little more effort to come in and get a punch pass to get the reduced. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay, that makes right sense to me. I just didn't, okay. Now I get it. Yep. Thanks. 
I, I personally don't have a problem with changing the rates. We're not talking about a significant change, and it's based off of some input from staff. We have uh, an opportunity, I think, to reevaluate and modify rates two months into next season if we want to, or you know, whatever the case may be. I, I tend to agree a little bit with Tom because I don't know that you can bank much off of what we saw transpire this year because of circumstances. But you know, here again, to start, it was just kind of like, here's what we think. And now we're here, which is here's what we kind of think a little bit better than what we thought before because it was a weird season. But uh, I would also once again emphasize that there should be a veteran discount across the board, regardless of if it's a day pass, a season pass, a family pass, a resident pass, a non-resident pass, whatever the case may be. And I don't know, I'll defer to um, staff on what that would look like, but something across the board. And then in that regard, all they have to do is prove that they're a veteran or a family member of a veteran or a family of a veteran, and then they get that, that discount, which I would assume if they're, unless they're purchasing a, on the day of, like a daily rate, it's pretty easy to verify that stuff, right? So for me, it, it would have been easier if we could show what the old, what the current rate is, what's the proposed new rate, and then you could extrapolate that, I guess, based on what we did experience, even though that might not be totally accurate. But if you had one good month, you could take it times three and kind of think what that would be anyway. But it would have been just nice to see how it compared old to proposed and then what the expected result is. And then I would include these rentable areas, even with that nonprofit language in there. So I don't know, is it that imperative we take action this month or can we get that kind of information and defer it to next month? Well, Pellant wants it pretty quick, right? I would think though if we took it in November, the beginning of, then council would have it that third Tuesday in November. And that should be enough time, I would think. But back on the, the fee structure here, Don, you mentioned something about early bird um, deals the season passes I think is a very is, is very reasonable I, I mean I would recommend using that as your early bird uh, deal and then raise those a little bit but that's just my my opinion so I think that's a pretty reasonable fee there and if you wanted to use that for your early bird sign up we can we can change it to that effect if you want to. Oh, well, it's up to everybody, but I just I think we talked earlier that that's pretty uh, a pretty pretty fair price. I don't know what other places are, but uh, that seems pretty good to me for a whole summer's worth of swimming. But did I hear Chris? Were you going to say something or somebody or? Alex. Oh, yeah, uh, Kelly, this is Chris Bartek. I, I just wondered if the commission would want to entertain more of a gap between the residents and the non-residents. I mean, if you look at a lot of the other aquatic centers in our region, they're charging anywhere from 350 to, you know, $5 for residents and then a little bit more, you know, in that 5 to $7 for non-residents. Um, I don't know if the commission would entertain you know, keeping that lower rate, that four to five dollars, you know, for the residents and the seven dollars for the non-residents. Thanks, Chris. Mayor, I agree with Chris. I, I, I think if for uh, for a person to come use the aquatic center all day for seven dollars is a very good deal. You can't even go to a movie for that. Um, and so I think, you know, whether whether we reduce the residential rate a little bit or increase the non-resident rate another dollar or two, I don't think that's very unreasonable. But uh, uh, anyway, I've talked to some staff about that, and so a you know, little pushback is that are we going to outprice ourselves to where people won't spend the money? But I don't believe so. I think if somebody's going to come here and they're going to spend a day here, a couple of dollars at more on a non-resident pass, I think it's fair. Just my thought. The the only reason that we kept them the same, if that's what you're referring to, is actually having a separate rate for resident versus non-resident is just to keep the line quicker. Otherwise, they'd have to enter each person's information to get their and have their proof of residency. 
uh, I guess, sorry, Don, I didn't mean that the day of would be okay. non-resident resident because okay. I agree that that our lines will be a real, yeah. and that'd be a, a hardship to put on the people at the admissions to determine whether people are resident or non-resident. I just think the general overall the price. Seven would be higher. Yeah, seven would be higher. And then so the, re the resident still has the opportunity to come in ahead of time and, and get that residential pass. If they choose not to, that's their choice. They can purchase that punch pass at the window too, right at the pool. So. Oh, okay. Kelly, that was going to be my comment before is a lot of these changes are as much about streamlining and getting rid of the bottleneck that we had this past year at the facility. Mm -hmm. um, when, they, when they're coming in for the daily stuff, the, the less information we need to gather and the less amount of rates they have to choose from, mm -hmm. we're, we're just trying to increase the efficiency there. I have no problem with this stuff if they're going to go get a pass and dealing with it at the office, but on site, it's just creating a huge bottleneck if we go with the same program as we had last year. It's good to know. Has there, been, has there been any thought about uh, doing online sales? I don't think there's been a lot of discussion about that to this point. Not at this point. Um, it's something we could consider. They all have to have their picture taken or sent to us, so... Um, it's something we could look at for sure. My guess is Any? that the council is looking at this for revenues with budgeting. That's why we we have this November deadline. Our budget for uh, the aquatics is just a wild guess at this point since we this summer so. More so, it was just trying to figure out some equitable solution. It, but we're going into the next year's budget. We have budget budgeted money, and we're just still going, unfortunately, with the guests. And hopefully, next year we'll get a better picture so we can forecast out a little further. But that, that's the rationale for the November deadline, I'm guessing, right? Uh, it was more so to try to get something in place before Christmas so we could do because people oh, want to because of the oh because yep. of the mailings and yep. Uh, okay, purchasing them for Correct. a gift or okay. People Correct. wanted to last year already purchase mm -hmm. passes, yeah. for Christmas gifts, so. So we should kind of hurry up. That'd be the preference. Yeah. Well, would there be any reason we can't uh, either, you know, have a quick meeting just to talk about the the rates if we can't come to agreement tonight based on the available data with the modifications, you know, in the next week or so? Or do you think we can get it squared away? And Just from what I've heard at this point, it sounds like if you've got a few recommendations, we could jot them down right now and just bring a revised recommendation sheet. If it's not too extensive, I heard maybe a slight increase in day rate passes for non, or in, uh, increase in uh, non-resident rate and restoring something for the veterans. Um, I think there was one other item. It didn't sound like there was a lot of changes. If you if you want to just spell out the changes you want to make, we can certainly add them tonight and get this thing wrapped up. I got no problem with that. So no, the the what we're talking about is not season passes or the or the week long punch card. What we're talking about is an increase in non-resident or somebody without a punch card showing up the day of that's accurate and it's it was six bucks and now the proposal's seven but what chris is saying and what is being echoed by uh mayor blazer would be to maybe go eight or something like that mm -hmm. you want to take each item individually kelly and just see if everybody's in agreement and okay day uh <clears throat> Day passes, that's what we're discussing, so move that, raise that to, Craig, you want to? Well, the conversation, so the way I'm understanding it is that you make it easy for your city residents, but they got to do a little something on their behalf. They either got to purchase a multi-day punch card or a family pass or something like that. But they could do that at the, at the park itself, yes. right? 
Actually, yes. we'll, be we'll be selling season passes at the park this year also. Okay, so if you're a city of Wisconsin Rapids resident, you have an opportunity to get a discounted rate just by purchasing a multi-day or a, fi a family pass. Correct. Right. Okay. So then, yeah, all we're really talking about is the second item under day pass is non-resident or without punch card. Mm -hmm. And whether that should be 7 or $8, it was 6 Correct. I think I would leave that at 7 Okay. I was just thinking if we had a daily resident pass price, it would be more like $5. But I see your point in that you're trying to reduce the number of sales at the ticket counter by encouraging the passes. So, But I, I think that resident rate, in my opinion, should always be in that 4 to $5 range, and then the non-resident should be 7 Okay, that's where we're at. But then we're not fixing the the speed bump in front of the door, if I understood right. No, you are. Because if you're a city resident and you're just purchasing a one day, you're going to pay 7 bucks. Well, I just heard it was different. No, but you have an option to pay the, the multi-day punch card for 20 Then it's $4 a day. Or like a season family pass or a season individual pass. Correct. At a reduced rate. Correct? Correct. So accept those changes and then add a veteran's discount. So what do you uh, want to go? Is that what we're thinking? Yeah. What what was veterans last year? It was I believe it was thirty. And that was just for the individual. Single. That was just for single, yes. There wasn't a family option. So, Craig, your intent is to add a family option for the veterans mm -hmm. at, at, a, at the same discount rate or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because if it's a day pass thing, you don't want to do anything with day passes. I mean, I get it. Then you don't have to verify. You don't have to check, and it is what it is. But if you take the step of coming forward and getting a multi-day pass, there should be a discount there. Or if you get a season pass, either as a resident or non-resident, then, you know, I don't care what that discount is for family or single. So it would be easier to do a percentage or? Well, it's probably best if you have round numbers. Round number, yeah. Yeah. You know? I don't know. Just arbitrarily, you could go five dollars less off a single or or ten. So a resident single could be fifty for a veteran. Resident senior could be forty for a veteran. Resident family could be one hundred and ten or a hundred a flat hundred. I don't know. I'm just. Uh, Stabbing out there because I read this and I realized and noticed that the veteran thing was coming off of there. But if we have an opportunity to expand it, and then for non-resident, I you know maybe it's a ten dollar discount across the board, or is it is it five and then it increases the ten for the for more family members, or is it ten and it increases the twenty? You know what I mean? So a single goes down to fifty, a resident senior would go down to twenty, uh, and then a resident family would go down to a flat one hundred. Non-resident single would go down to 110. Non-resident family would go down to 220. Or would it be 100 and 220? And then how about if you purchase a multi-day five entries instead of 20 bucks, you pay 15? Tom. Yeah, I, I see the intent uh, with it, and I agree with it, but it, 
if we're trying to streamline things, then but adding seems like we're adding more than um, if, well, there's diff more would be more differences in prices. So would we be adding more, uh, more work to the staff there? Or not? I'm trying to put this together in my mind. Season having season a difference pass. for the veterans is uh, is worth if there's going to be that extra headache that, that would be could be created. That's what's going through my mind, and I don't know if that's right or not. For selling season passes, it doesn't really matter if that's all set up in our software. Um, the the um, punch passes might be a little bit more difficult just because the staff would have to actually check a military ID at the, you know, they'd have to have that with them when they enter the aquatics facility. Um, so maybe it makes the most sense just to do season passes then? It probably would be the easiest, but it's it's really up to you. That's no, less verification. So would we go resident single down to 50 if you're a vet, resident senior down to 20 if you're a vet, resident family down to 100, and that would of course be with, with one family member being a vet. And then non-resident single would be down to 110, and non-resident family would be down to 220. And this is all for veterans, yeah. That's my point, yeah. And those are all, if they purchase those on site, they got to stand in line and fill out some things too, or no? They could purchase those at the office or they could purchase them before the season. We'll okay. start selling those as soon as the rates are approved. And without verification, then sorry, you don't get the discount? Correct. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. So we we're okay then with the day passes where we started. Go to guardi guardian passes. Keep that the same. Is day pass going to be eight dollars then? Seven. It'll stay seven. at seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any discussion on the guardian passes? No. Oh, what was that, that Kelly? Uh, Tom, was that you? Yeah, what did what you add any, at the end there? Any questions on the guardian passes? Resident non-swimmer uh, only available to age 62 and over is $2. Non-resident non-swimmer only available to age 62 and over is $4. Did that go okay this year, Mary and Matt and Don, or with the Guardian thing, all that kind of stuff? <laughs> I think it went well, but I think there was a, quite a few people that were abusing it. And that's oh, okay. why we changed age to 62, because a lot of younger moms that would come in with their moms, you'd find them in the water swimming with their kids. Okay, okay. Well, you guys see it every day, so I, uh, I'm not going to argue that. Um, so, leave. Agree to leave. Question, Mary and Craig. Uh, would it just be easier? I see some of the other aquatic centers just do a twenty percent discount on veterans' uh, season passes. Would that just make it a little easier for the the sales if it was a straight across the board twenty percent on season passes? We have to set the rates individually in our software, so it really doesn't matter what they're set at. So as Craig suggested them, that would be pretty easy to, to change in our system. It wouldn't. It doesn't make any difference with regard to what you do. The problem is, is that tw you know, 20% of 60 is, is 12 bucks. So then you're dealing with 
yeah. But are we in agreement with the the veterans portion of this, or are we? Is there further discussion, or? Yeah, I agree. I just was wondering if it, if there was an easier way to to do it for the staff. Keep it. You okay with Don? What we're okay. Uh, Guardian, we just keep the same. Um, season passes, resident single, 60. Okay. Resident senior, 62 and over, $30. Resident family, 120 plus $10 for in excess of four children. In excess of four people in the family. Four children. Right. Yes, yes. Okay, with that, um, non-resident single, $120. Any discussion? Non-resident families, $240 plus $10 in excess of four people. Okay. And the early bird specials. If the season passes are purchased by the end of the year, um, receive $20 off family pass. And on March 31st, receive $10 off of a family pass. So we're pretty much okay with the proposed uh, changes here, other than what, what we've discussed. I have the veterans rates noted so I can make that change and okay. send it out to everybody. I've moved to approve with the changes as uh, discussed. Okay, motion was made. Is there a second? Motion made I'll by Craig. That. Lee, and second by Lee to approve the changes as discussed. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Me. Ayes have it. And then we'll talk about the Rent. rental Rent. of uh, various spaces at a different meeting for not local nonprofits, that kind of thing? Correct. Okay. Okay, we move on to uh, item number four. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, we just did that one. Move on to bills. Bill, uh, Tom, did you review the bills? Yeah, there's uh, $33,088.15 here. A um, big chunk of that is we must have got the cost of goods for the concessions, almost $19,000. So uh, I would move for approval. Okay, motion made by Tom. Is there a second? Was that concessions for the aquatic center? Aquatic. How come some things are marked as aquatics concession and some things are just concession? Probably just accidentally didn't put aquatics there. <laughs> That's our only concession area. Oh, okay. It was however the bills were coded, so. Gotcha. Was there a motion to approve? I'll second it, Tom. Second by Craig to approve. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, staff reports, Mary. Uh, quiet time of year compared to summer. Um, our registration leagues end today for our basketball, co-ed, and women's volleyball. 
They will begin the first week in November with the practice game. And pickleball open play actually begins tonight at East Junior High Fieldhouse. That's all I have for tonight. Okay, thank you. Matt? Uh, this time of year we tend to try to put a big push on and get some last minute stuff done. We uh, completed the north concessions to Annette Robinson Park, the soffit, the trim, fascia, painting. Um, so that storm damage that was left over from 19 is completed. That facility is ready to go. Um, after the zoo closed, we had the bathroom floors painted. At Helen's house, that's completed, ready to go. Pavement restoration by the open shelter at Robinson has been completed. That was damaged due to a large tree falling in that storm. Um, so we actually poured concrete on the east side, similar to what we did on the west side, and then patched the uh, asphalt. Um, sprinkler systems, we're, we've completed all the winterization of the sprinkler systems, including the auto watering system on East Grand. Um, aquatic center winterization is about 95% complete. There's just some little odds and ends yet. I believe the sprinkler system was completed today, correct, Jake? Mm -hmm. um, final mowing of the year probably is in progress right now. Uh, we'll probably be switching to leaf pickup here within a week. We're going through plow route streets is giving us uh, all their plow route reports. So we're doing whatever tree trimming we need to do before winter for the plow routes. And we've got stump grinding still going on, uh, and we're doing some uh, preparation this week for the fall tree planting that was part of that grant. That'll begin next week. So this week we'll have some stump removals to do and some prep work for that. And we've got auction season coming again. We did a large one for engineering, and we've got one for streets and parks currently listed. And our LTE will be finished at the end of this week, so we'll be down to our core full-time group till April. Or May. Any questions? Kelly, Tom here. Yes, Tom. Yeah, I'm just a quick, if I, unless I missed it, uh, how's been the activity at the skate park at, that we reopened it? What, what is your question, Tom? Yeah, uh, activity at the, the skate park, how, uh, since, it's with, since it's been reopened? Uh, they yeah. had a, they had one incident there about a week ago. Um, they did not do a closure, but uh, PD uh, went over there and then informed us that they had an issue. Uh, apparently, there was a, a fight that broke out. I don't have any details of it, but other than that, as far as vandalisms go, I believe we've been pretty good the last week mm -hmm. or two, Jake. Yep, been quiet. I met with our school resource officers on the topic after our last meeting. And we're awaiting some uh, a policy recommendation or something to implement with regard to people that can't control themselves over there, correct? Correct. One of the things they mentioned was the addition of a couple of cameras on that facility so we have a better ability to identify who's there and who isn't. And the other thing would be when they're identified, then they are, um, and it'll be part of what, uh, you know, this proposed uh, modification would be, but then they'd be out for a certain period of time. And that would be admittedly tough to police, but there is apparently a, a, an officer that would have that as a portion of their, you know, route for that to wherever, whenever time of day, evening, whatever it is, who can do some modify or monitoring of that. So we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> I talked to our SROs about kind of talking with kids again too, because uh, that helped the last time to a degree. But I think, uh, you know, we can only do what we can do, so. The other things that are in the in process in, in conjunction with uh, the police department will probably help the circumstance. On the camera piece of it, uh, IT has gone out for uh, proposals for cameras in that area. Any other questions? Thank, thank you, Matt. Sorry? Oh, I'm sorry, Mayor. Uh, Matt, about the budget attached? Yes. Maybe. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about it. Uh, we attached the, the preliminary park and rec budget for next year. Sure. Um, 
as, as the mayor alluded to, this is just preliminary, but the biggest change obviously is the aquatic center. There really is no major changes in any of the other departments as far as cost shifts. Um, so if you go through it, very little changes. There's been some increases in the green areas, uh, obviously due to things like the East Grand construction project um, and the riverfront project. We have a lot more plants to take care of now and a lot of uh, mulching to do. But the other areas are pretty much status quo as of now. Kelly, Tom, one last thing. Yes, Tom. Um, have we, with the aquatic center, and obviously it was a strange year and we're still in a strange year, so we don't know what's gonna happen next year yet. Um, with the capacity being 400 that it was this year, and that that was reached on some days. The capacity of the pool is 822, I think. Talking to some of the staff, a couple, uh, and obviously because of the limit on people and whatnot, maybe added to the problem. But a couple of the comments that I was given was that even with, with the capacity of 400, that, that is, was getting pretty crowded inside the pool area. Um, have, have there been any interviews with the uh, uh, staff that was uh, people that were working there uh, to that? And if we would be going back up to the full capacity, what that would add to in, I guess, the num number of people that we possibly would have to have a, working or not tom we we have had a discussion on that i i think at some point here we're going to make a recommendation but i don't believe 800 is a realistic number i don't think jake does either um in, in my our mind i think we're looking at somewhere between five six hundred as being a max capacity 800 i don't think could be done there safely that yeah and that's uh Maybe I should have brought it up by uh, one of the earlier items, but that because uh, that was a concern that was raised talking to the staff of um, even at four hundred was they had to do a lot of work. I mean, it was or that a lot of people in there that it, re it isn't really for eight hundred people as we were led to believe, I guess so. We'll we'll bring a recommendation forward at the next meeting for what we feel is a is a realistic capacity, but it's okay. going to be somewhere in the yep. neighborhood of five six hundred. I'm guessing eight eight hundred. I don't believe is even close to realistic. No, that that's the comments I was given. So it may be worthwhile to try to get a hold of a few of the college kids or something to get their opinion on what they think too. On that same point, on that on that capacity aspect, there, um, I noticed this year, and I was it was brought to my attention that uh, where the slide is, uh, that that was really congested with with kids. And, and aside from the um, social distancing, just in the future, is there a staff member that kind of keeps uh, uh, keeps eye, keeps an eye on that? Because there was one time those they they were just packed going up that uh, ladder, and I feel that could be a safety issue, but uh, Mary, I don't know what the staff, how they regulate that. Yeah, we're regulated by Wood County. We have to have an attendant at the top um, to make sure that they're going down the slides correctly, not improperly. They really weren't in charge of making sure that customers were social distancing. That was up to the customers themselves. And, and that wasn't even really where I was going. I was just going in the future they're so packed on the steps, could there be an accident? Uh, I mean, they were, I mean, it was really congested. Yeah, we talked, to, we did have a talk about possibly putting color, color code the oh, steps to okay. have two lines, one line for the green slide and another line for the blue slide to kind of separate them a little bit more. Okay. So that if somebody did get to the top, hopefully there was room for them to, if they weren't allowed to go down the slide, that there was room for them to go down. Okay, thanks, I, mm -hmm. I'm sure 
it'll be handled. Any other questions? Otherwise, Matt, thanks for your report, and uh, the, your staff did a great job in uh, the city this year and the parks and everything. So. Just one more comment on the Aquatic Center. Uh, I did notice in the Lazy River where the people come in with the tubes and they also have to go out with the tube, that little stairway was really congested. And with the big kids and the little kids, I saw a lot of little kids kind of getting run over. Um, so I don't know if there's a something that could be looked at there too to make, kind of make an entry and an exit maybe in two different spots. So, just a thought. Okay, thank you, Chris. Chris, we um, did have some trouble with main, uh, with the flow of the Lazy River, so that was going to be adjusted because what was happening is, especially with the younger kids on the tubes, when they were supposed to be getting out where they were at the exit point, the current was blowing them by, so to speak, or they were floating right by the exit. And that was something I think that they, the that um, maintenance was going to look at because it was supposed to be faster on the inside than on the outside, which would give time. And it happened to be reversed this summer. So we're hoping that will help accommodate so that kids can get in and out a little bit easier and not have that pile up because they were getting with the flow of the river. Sounds good. Okay. Any other questions, or is there a motion to adjourn? adjourn? So moved. Motion by Craig. Second by Lee to adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, ayes have it. Thank you, uh, commissioners, staff members, aldermen, and family viewers as well. Or, um,